It's Mr. Gallegos. Make sure you're taking Cornell notes while you're watching this. This is unit one vocabulary. Our first term is cultural landscape. Cultural landscape is the combination of a place's human features. These may be economic activities like agriculture, for example, here on the photograph or industry. It could be also just the ways in which human activity has changed or transformed the natural landscape. Diffusion is the process of spreading or moving around a particular area over time. Diffusion could be features or trends, and there's actually six types of diffusion. There's hearth, relocation, expansion, hierarchical, contagious, and stimulus diffusion. So if you notice, for example, this map shows the expansion of communism over time to the lighter areas on the map. Density is the rate of something in a given area of space. Density could be arithmetic, or it could be physiological. So for example, on this map, you have a population density map. And in this case, you see the darker areas like Lagos that are mostly densely populated. And then you have the lighter areas like Taraba, which are the least densely populated. Distribution, or how something is organized in a given area of space. Distribution is also the arrangement of a specific phenomenon, issue, or a set of objects given in a given area, more so the way that something is spread out over the earth. This specific map, for example, shows you the, the distribution of members of a church called the Latter-day Saints Church, or the Mormons. Now specifically, you'll notice that the distribution of Mormons around the world is mostly concentrated in North and South America and other areas like Northern Europe, Japan, and Australia. Environmental determinism is the late 19th century approach to geography. It states that environment causes human activities and that the answers to questions of human geography could al always be found in physical sciences. It also pushes forth the argument that the physical environment is directly related to the socio-cultural development of a place. All this means is, for example, that people that live in this area known as a desert are often limited by the desert in anything that they do. In any human activity, they're always going to be limited. Location is any given object's position on the surface of the earth. It could be absolute, it could be relative, and it could have factors like site and situation, place name, or toponym. And it could also be mathematical. You have a set of latitude and longitude coordinates, that could be a mathematical location. I always think of location as this pin on the earth, sort of the pin that you find on your maps app on your device. Now pattern is the arrangement of something in a given area of space. Patterns can be linear, they can be centralized, or they could be random. So for example, in this image here, you see terrace farming. There is a linear pattern here, a pattern that repeats over and over. Now this pattern is specifically a rice paddy, and a rice paddy is where we plant rice. This shows the concept of pattern. Possibilism is the idea that although the environment may set limits to humans, humans will always adjust and they will always prevail. Possibilism is also known as environmental possibilism. And when I think of environmental possibilism, it helps me to think of people like these that are trying as hard as they can to do agriculture in an area that seems to me to be at first glance not so suitable for agriculture. But still humans will try, still humans will prevail. Region. It's an area of earth that shares a common characteristic or a common trend. It could be a formal region or a uniform region. It could be a functional or nodal region. And it could be a vernacular or perceptual region. Now think of this for example. These are formal regions established by the U.S. Census Bureau because they provide a unique set of shared characteristics. In this case, the U.S. Census Bureau uses them in order to more effectively estimate a count of the number of people that live in each division. So for example, we have the Western Division and the Southern Division, and these divisions help the U.S. Census Bureau organize themselves when they have to count how many people there are in the United States every 10 years. Scale generally refers to the ratio between the distance of what's on a map and what's on Earth. It could also be a relationship between what is on the map and what's on the landscape of the Earth. Cartographers love to use scale. And the reason they love to use scale is for images like this, where they'll show you a small scale map that's a map of the entirety of Australia with Melbourne just pointed out right here. But then right next to it, they'll show you a large scale map with Melbourne right in the center and all of these other things that cartographer wants you to see. For example, they want you to see the airport. They want you to see where the capital city is. And they also want you to know what each amount of distance on the map really means on Earth. Spatial means of or relating to spaces here on Earth and near its surface. When you think of spatial, I want you to think of the organization of something on the Earth's surface. Now, for example, this cartographer decided to show you spatially where all of these specific phenomena or issues are represented on the planet Earth. Now specifically, this could mean anything. Since this map doesn't have really a legend, it could mean that these dots are everything from where the most people live to where the most earthquakes happen to where the most people with a certain last name live. That's what spatial means.